Hi, my name is Parker. I'm the audiophiliac of the day, and I'm a mechanical engineer at Soundsmith. So I've been working there for almost two months now, fresh out of school, and um, I've been tasked with creating a fixture for our new phono cartridge line, whereas we're revamping the entire thing. Not only are the new ones going to perform better, they're going to assemble a lot easier. So we've come across bottlenecks in our production process. So that's where I've been tasked with creating a fixture to align specific components in a very highly precise manner to um, assemble our cartridges without, without the use of high power optics and, and hands. So, so how old are you? I'm 21. So you just got out of school. And you applied, we applied for a lot of jobs, right? Not that many, believe it or not. Uh -huh. I applied for mechanical engineering position at a bicycle company. Uh -huh. And uh, I really didn't see that going anywhere. I really, <laughs> audio is where it's at. It really is. Wow. So tell me about your first meeting with Peter. Peter Lederman, this is, we're talking about Soundsmith. Yes, yeah, Soundsmith. It's Peekskill, New York, right? In Peekskill, New York. Okay. So what was that like? That was, that was really, really surreal, kind of crazy, crazy experience. I can't even put it into words, really. Meeting him in the first, and I watched him on YouTube. Let's, let's go back to the beginning. I watched him on YouTube, uh -huh. and uh, I saw the tour of Soundsmith. He said it was a mentoring company, and that just it, mm -hmm. it lit a bulb in my head. I emailed him, and he got back to me within, within a reasonable amount of time for Peter. Okay. And... Um, we met up. I, I went to Soundsmith and he brought me into the Blue Room, which is our demo area with all our speakers and it, it, was, it was unbelievable. The lighting and all this gear, it was just jaw-dropping. Wow. Yeah, so he sat me down and we did an interview. That was pretty crazy. <laughs> so, so, okay, so now you've worked with him for a few months, right? Yeah. So, so what do you, what do you, what's the biggest surprise of working with him? What did you learn from him that was like a big, you know, like you didn't learn in school, stuff like that kind of blew your mind? Well, there's a lot I learned about Soundsmith themselves and Peter, and then there's a lot of stuff I learned about audio just in the short period I've been there, mm -hmm. which is just about the science of turntables and phono cartridges specifically, and uh, wave propagation, mechanical impedance, all sorts of stuff I had no idea about in school. Mm. They didn't teach me any of it. And I paid them, <laughs> I paid them. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, so I guess. But you're also doing repairs and stuff. Yeah, right? I've, I've been doing repairs my whole life, actually. I've been repairing vintage audio equipment, mm -hmm. modifying it, repairing it, and building my own. Mm -hmm. So that was a jump start for working at Soundsmith, because I've been put into the repair division, firstly. Uh -huh. And uh, I got, they were just throwing stuff at me and I was yeah. fixing it. it so was, it's like it, a sink or swim kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Like they, you could handle this or you couldn't. <laughs> pretty <laughs> much, so you yeah. passed the audition. I guess I did. That's cool. <clears throat> so it's a lot of vintage turntables and stuff? Vintage gear, mainly. We do get in a lot of new high-end turntables to set up for our customers. Uh -huh. And then we pack them up all calibrated and uh, send them off. Uh -huh. So that's all brand new stuff. But a lot of our gear that we get in the repair department is vintage. Bang & Olufsen, there's a lot of nuances to working on Bang & Olufsen that I, I had no idea about. Um, Tanberg gear, which is very, very awesome. I really like it. So yeah, turntables are amazing because they look so simple. Bladder, an arm, a bearing. What's the big deal? And yet, there's a lot. <laughs> At first glance, yeah, yeah, they do look simple, but you take into consideration so many factors that could uh, contribute to what makes a good turntable good, which is wave propagation, uh, stability, all sorts of things that will contribute to the sound. Mechanical impedance, again. Um, the combination of parts, the materials, the precision, the tolerances, all have to do with the way a turntable performs. And it's really incredible because, again, it looks simple, but you go deeper and it just keeps going and going. And there's so much that you just don't see at first glance. You know, the thing that I think is so fascinating that people don't think about when they think about turntables is that LPs, A, are not flat. And B, the hole isn't always exactly in the center. 
So it's it, the the stylus is riding up and down over these hills on groove walls. Yeah, and then the, they're, they're moving side to side for whatever degree the hole isn't exactly in the center. Yeah. So I mean, if records were one hundred percent flat and the holes were always in the center, it, this would be a lot easier. I mean, it would contribute to it being a lot easier, but there's still a lot of problems that you got to address with vibrations of complex waveforms on a microscopic scale, mm. which um, it's really crazy science to get into. And I'm very, very happy that I've I've landed here. Mm. Well, that's a good way. To, that's a good place to end. <laughs> I think so. You're, yeah. You're landing and our ending. So uh, thanks, Parker. You are the audiophiliac for the day. Thank you. See you soon.